Hey guys, Leanna here, playing The Escapers. I'm kind of obsessed with this game. But this level is my Waterloo. I am terrible at it. I beat it by fluke before, and I cannot get past it now. So it's pretty funny, and apologize in advance for sucking. Um, but I, I wanted to sort of go with the, the prison metaphor. We're, we're gonna be very, oh wait, what's my favors that I have to do? Nick, all right, gotta find Nick. There's a billion dudes in this level too. Oh my God, it's overwhelming. Uh, but I wanted to, I guess Nick isn't talky talky right now, but I wanted to run with the, the prison metaphor of the escapists and, and talk about the Anita Sarkeesian, what I couldn't say speech, what I couldn't say, couldn't say. Couldn't say because because some patriarchal monster is stealing her words. I I I get it and I don't get it. Okay, go away, Max. I I get it. Famous scary. Okay, for for okay context context. A lot of people viewing this already know the context, so I, I apologize in advance for this brief detour before I get to the analysis, but some people don't know. Some people actually watch my YouTube channel because they like me, and not just because, you know, they're, they're uh, uh, tuning in to see what I'm going to say about the latest dramatic issue. Um, thank you for those of you that watch this for me. But, uh, oops, I forgot to take my mop. Oh, no. Um, but, so what happened is Anita Sarkeesian did some talk, I don't know if it was in Australia, I think it was in Australia, I, it, it doesn't matter. The structure of the talk was all the things she couldn't say, couldn't do, she couldn't tell people, fuck you, which is kind of, okay, I'm gonna spare myself, I'm gonna hold back, this is difficult for me, I have to restrain which is not easy for my bra or my jeans or my personality. You may have noticed this inside matches outside. Uh, the, so she said she couldn't say fuck you to the people who harass her. She couldn't show anger. She couldn't show that the harassment was getting to her. She couldn't tell jokes. And the list just went on and on and on, and all the stuff she claimed she couldn't do. And watching it, I just ran down the list of these are all things I've done in the last six months, personally. I have told people where to go. You guys have seen the videos. <laughs> uh, and the funny thing is, the people I had to tell where to go were Anita's own supporters, the thing, the world is a terrible place for women, and, and somehow decide to add to that. But. So, and, and the angry thing, I, I don't know what, what planet she's on, but her anger comes off her with every tweet, every video, every speech she gives. It's very clear the woman is angry and fed up. So don't worry about that, Anita. Don't worry. That's coming across loud and clear. You don't have to hold back. We all get that you're angry. You have every right to be angry about some of the treatment you've received. The, the joke thing is more complicated, okay? And, and I say this is, hey, most successful Canadian late night woman in history, right here. Most of y'all don't know because it was in Canada, but I was on G4 for two seasons as well. So some of you saw that. So I'm kind of aware of what happens when you end up on the, the radar, when you become famous. I mean, Anita is famous in certain circles. Some people don't know where the, who the heck she is, but within gaming circles and within pop culture circles, you know, the Whedonverse, she's, she's famous. But, whoops. Um, and, and that's the thing. I think she's confusing 
the realities of fame, the, the tough realities of fame that we all go through. And the first two to three years are the absolute worst. The absolute worst. I went through it. It was awful. It was soul numbing. Um, I, when I used to work in a music sta station, we used to see there was a two year cycle on pop princesses. And, you know, pop got male pop stars were a little different, but we saw it most notably with the women because the women tend to lose a ton of weight. But they come in as these really wide eyed, bright, shiny, eager souls. And two years later, almost like clockwork, they'd come in as these hollowed out bitter husks. That first two years is tough. And then you gotta come out of it. And unfortunately, there's absolutely no shortcut to that. And I, I saw, you know, we saw it with Avril Lavigne, we saw it with Christina Aguilera, we saw it with, um, I won't name any more names. The only person I notably did not see it with was Britney Spears, and we all saw what happened to her. It was, you know, a delayed but epic meltdown. So Britney got it too, she was just better at hiding it. And the reality is it doesn't matter who you are, that level of attention is very difficult. I mean, it's not even that it's necessarily bad. It's just a lot. You know, it's overwhelming. And it's, it's particularly difficult for women. Don't freak out, guys. Don't freak out. Calm. Think of the mountain. Think of the mountain. Oh, there's a cop in here. Whoop. Max. Ah, you ran away, Max. There I go. Oh, we have to go exercise. Well, I'm exercising. I'm whooping you. But okay, so I was going to say something contentious and then I left y'all hanging. Sorry! Uh, what I was going for is it's especially difficult for women, not because things are worse for women, because women are socialized differently. Women are socialized to internalize criticism in a different way than men are. We're, we're trained to have it hit us harder. Instead of it being a, a thing you have to work on, it's a, it's a flaw in your core. It's that, you know, it's, it's that, that's a problem. It's a massive problem with the connection between femininity and likability, you know? It's sort of encapsulated in the you're likable enough Hillary thing. And it seems very much like Anita is very much struggling with likability. And all signs point to the fact that her, her handlers are not managing her well. She should have management because she's clearly not prepared for this amount of scrutiny. But her, her handlers are not managing her. They're not keeping her functional. And, and that is massively concerning. Shut up, phone. See, fuck you, phone. I can say it. But that, that's a problem. When, when someone is in the public eye and they're, they're feeling as, as wrung out and drawn out as she is. Because there's a point in time you realize that, and this is, this is something women are not trained to do the same way men are. Me and my husband and I talk about this all the time. When I was younger, it used to be, why can't you just determine that these people are assholes? And the reality was, I was, <laughs> you know, I, I, I was saying the person was an asshole. The reality is, you know, the way I was brought up, it didn't matter. It didn't matter how big an asshole a person was. I was trained to try to placate them. That's the female socialization I grew up with. That being nice was more important than being authentic. And this is something we know we have to work on with girls a lot. And so I'm seeing a lot of that in Anita's complaint. She's confusing the realities of fame for misogyny. 
And because she's doing that, because everything comes through that lens, because she's so, and then th that comes from the encouragement of the people around her. I mean, I have people around me questioning me when I, when I say something is gender-based and, you know, it's, I have to prove my case. I have to show that, that no, you know, it, it may not be better or worse, it's just different. And I think it's undeniable that the experience for men and the experience for women are different. And they're better or worse in different ways. But then I start thinking, you know, she says she can't show that the harassment is getting to her. Well, first of all, she's fairly, failing miserably on that point. Whoopsie. She's failing miserably on that point. The harassment is clearly getting to her. No doubt. Because she talks about it constantly. If something's not getting to you, you don't talk about it all the time. You know? Like, whoops, I got beat up. And, and that's the thing. Like, yeah, Anita, you, you're talking about the harassment getting to you. Don't worry about that. Again, don't worry about it. And that would be my advice to her. Like, yes, yeah, some people are going to think you suck. Some people think I suck for criticizing her. You know, how dare I? There's been a lot of discussion about this whole Saint Anita thing, but that's how ridiculous the cult of personality surrounding her has gotten, and that's not fair to her, it's dehumanizing. Calling somebody a saint is dehumanizing, because you don't really mean it. It's ironic. The reality is Anita's fans suck. Because if she's not getting more out of her fans, then is being taken by her haters, well, she doesn't have a very balanced career structure, right? Because, I mean, it, it took me a while because, again, this is a woman thing. We're not supposed to be all that, you know? We're not supposed to be confident or self-assured or, or dare to say, you know, I'm pretty good at, at this one thing, you know? I'm pretty good at this. We're just good, like, that's crazy when you think about that. The women are discouraged from saying, I'm good at stuff. We're not supposed to say this, it's ridiculous. But it's true. You know, when I, I actually started going the other way because I realized how ridiculous the whole thing was. And, you know, started on the whole, I'm fabulous and I know it, because it's true, I'm pretty awesome at stuff, you know? Uh, some days I think it's awesome just to, you know, have, have managed to stay on this planet breathing and moving for, uh, oh yeah, women aren't supposed to say how old we are, so I'm going to, I'm 37. There we go, oh my god, 37, I'm old! No, I'm not. But that's what we're supposed to say right? But that's the thing, like, these things only have control over you if you let them have control over you. And Anita is letting a lot of things control her that shouldn't. You know, it, it, she could be, I mean, look at, look at, I was gonna say she could be mother, motherfucking Teresa. No, motherfucking Teresa had haters. Christopher Hitchens hated Mother Teresa, hated her. To the point that it was almost, like, irrational. He could not stand her. So even mother freaking Teresa has haters. And when you put stuff in perspective that way, it's like, yeah, okay, th this is a lousy part of the job. I have a friend who's in law enforcement, and, and we occasionally have talks, and... Um, we realized fairly quickly that our jobs, believe it or not, have a lot in common. We, we both tend to be really misunderstood in a negative way. Oh, Boogie needs sleeping pills. Oh, poor Boogie, having trouble sleeping. But, we, you know, both entertainers and cops tend to be demonized in a really strange and odd way. But we also see people at their absolute worst you know in in um my case it's you see people frequently just fall down disgusting drunk right 
or you get those people on the internet who just want to take a crack because like you think you're better than me that's why people go after people who have any sort of fame it's you think you're better than me well i think i'm better at one thing than you <laughs> that's it right now i'm better at hiding in lockers than jail guards are chasing me that's just empirically correct you know and and the thing that most people who who uh have, have careers in the public eye have more than most people is just tenacity. We stick to things even when it sucks. You know, that's, that's what it comes down to a lot of the time. Nothing shinier than that. This is gonna suck. Okay, at least it's over with. But, so this, I mean, this is the thing. You're not supposed to let, you know, that whole thing, don't let, don't let it, don't let it show it's getting to you. Why not? Who told, who told Anita Sarkeesian not to tell, not to show that the harassment is getting to her? First of all, she's not very good at it, as I said before. But who told her that? Who gave her that advice? Because it is absolutely human for harassment to get to you. People harass because it works. You know, when harassment has gotten really bad, it's gotten to me. <laughs> I do not deny that. I've never even tried to deny that. And, you know, in a way, I'm honest about harassment getting to me. Oh, I lost my job. What? No, I'm going to restart this day. This day sucked. See, you can do that in games, but you can't do it in real life, and that's why you need to be tenacious, like Tenacious D. See, that's, that's the thing. When you're dealing with on, of any harassment of any kind, and, and real life harassment is way scarier than, than online harassment. Uh, you know, you, you kinda had to, you're the metal, and they tried to kill the metal, but the metal wouldn't die. And I'm being silly, but these are the things that those of us that have been around for you know, a while, tell ourselves to keep context in our experience, because that's, you know, context is big. Knowing how to sort of manage and, and, and put the lousier parts into tiny little boxes. And, you know, so they're manageable. And the thing, there's two things about Anita Sarkeesian's brand that she could change. And I think really turn it around because there's a lot of people who are really pulling for her. There are a lot of people that really want her to do well just because, you know, feminist and gaming and everybody, you know, the vast majority of people want equality. There are a few shitlords that don't, I won't deny it. There's some massive assholes, I've met them. But, you know, most people want equality. Most people want to make sure all people are being treated fairly. They just don't want to be blamed for the problem. When the problem, I mean, patriarchy, patriarchy exists, but not every man is a patriarch, right? A patriarch is something very specific, and most men ain't that. You know, J.R. Ewing was a patriarch, right? Not even, Jock Ewing was the patriarch. J.R. had issues because he wasn't. He was constantly trying to get daddy's approval. But, you know, the Bush family, they're patriarchs. The Kennedys, they're patriarchs. Dude working a construction site ain't a patriarch. And too often armchair feminists use patriarchy and men interchangeably and they're not but the big thing if if anita wants license to be funny like me if anita wants to be me i mean basically everything i'm hearing from her she wants to be the right to be angry check me i get angry she wants to tell people fuck you i tell people fuck you all the time i am a great a expert at the you know the gaelic martial art of fuck you I excel at fuck you. 
I might as well get it tattooed on my butt. I actually can't tattoo. That's something I suck at. I cannot tattoo. Ginger kid problem. But, okay. So she wants to be angry. I got that down. She wants to be able to say fuck you. I got that down too. She wants to be funny. I bet many of you just had a chuckle at my antics. But what am I doing? I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself. You know, I'm being an idiot. And I know it. I mean, I... She says she has to choose every word on Twitter carefully. That's her mistake. People warm up when they see you as a person. You know, she should be ta she should be posting pictures of cats and stuff. <laughs> because people want to know what she's like outside of that stern lumberjack librarian thing she puts on. And I'm allowed to get serious at times. You know, I'm, I, I stay populist, but I'm allowed to get serious. And that's because people know I'm capable of not being. I have a well-rounded public persona. And this guy's annoying the shit out of me. Uh, and, and so, you know, if, if she wants the license to make jokes, make jokes. I mean, she complains that she stopped making jokes because... You know, she wasn't laughing with gamers and games. She was laughing at gamers and games. She was looking down her nose at them. Of course, people are going to be upset about that. Of course, right? I mean, that's. That's just a given. When you're laughing at somebody, you're not making jokes, you're being a bully. And her fans have emulated that. Her fans have replicated that. And so we've got this very hostile us versus them culture surrounding the, the, the dialogue or the dialectic, as Gamer Ghazi likes to say. What a fucking shit lord word right there. Dropped in a regular conversation, dialectic. No, it's a dialogue. Dialectic. Yeah, he went to college. Probably on daddy's money. You know. You notice it's never mommy's mommy money. People don't assume it's mommy's money. You know when people are gonna assume it's mommy's money? When Madonna's kids go to college. <laughs> then it's mom's money, and that's why Madonna is awesome. Why did I punch you, Max? I wanna make love, not war. But ah Max. But that's the thing, she complains that. She doesn't want to be, f she, she can't be funny. Well, she started, it didn't work. She didn't get good. She gave up. And anybody who's done comedy knows it's like anything else. You suck and you get better. And Anita, your jokes sucked. I say this with love, your jokes were not good. Trust me, there was a time where my jokes were not good and they had to get better. But you don't just, you don't just wake up one day and decide you want to tell jokes in media. It takes work and skill. And she just wants to be instantly accepted. It doesn't work that way. Anybody who tries to be funny in the public sphere, sphere gets the shit hammered out of them before they're accepted. And her entire speech, like the name of this guy, Officer Shitlord, I'm very proud of that. See, that's funny. But her entire speech seems to be, why wasn't I instantly accepted? No one is. The rest of us don't tend to fixate on all the times that, you know, we were told no, or we were told you suck, because it's too discouraging. You know, that, that's why you're grateful for the people that, that do accept and understand you. Oops. That's why you're so grateful for your fans and you're so grateful for the people who get it. Because everybody has people that just don't get what they do and I don't understand. Who is making her feel so bad about herself that she is somehow uniquely awful in that way? She's not. You know, she's got some improvements to make, but I think she has something to offer, but 
if if she wants to be snarky, be snarky. If she wants to be angry, be angry. You know, if if, if she wants to tell jokes, tell jokes. No one's stopping her. She may get resistance, but that's not the same as stopping her now. The only, you know, exception to that is if someone among her handlers uh, is actually telling her don't do it. And, you know, that, that I know that's when I get tripped up because if the people around you don't support you, it's pretty miserable being in the public eye. If, if the people around you, like in your inner circle, aren't being, you know, lovingly honest with you about what your strengths and weaknesses are and guiding you towards your strengths, then it's a pretty miserable existence because then it's all negatives. And that's, that's the main thing that if Anita wants the license to tell jokes, she's got to get out of that persistently negative paradigm she finds herself in. I mean, look at the names of everything she does. What I couldn't say. Negative. Right? Negative. Massive negative. What I couldn't say. Tropes versus women. Negative. Not challenges for women. Tropes versus women. Things are immediately against us. And what is it? Eight things to make games less shitty for women. Negative! If you start off on a negative, Anita, people are not primed to laugh. If you want people to laugh, start positive. You make people feel like shit for a living, and that's fine. There's a rule for that. But you can't have your cake and eat it too. You have a brand. It has made you a lot of money. Accept that. Accept that for every door you open, there are two more you're leaving behind because you walk through the hall and doors usually close behind you. I mean, I will likely never be able to do a kid's show. My tits are all over the internet. My ass is all over half of it. Actually, I think my ass is all over the internet. My tits are over half of it. But people notice my tits. And that just shows how huge my tits are, that I have a giant badonk and people notice the boobs. But that's what makes me awesome. See, I, I have accepted that. But I realized I have a ridiculous physicality. And instead of being pissed about that, I go, how can I make this work for me? Because the thing that was weird about me is I was the nerd. And I think you guys may notice, I'm a nerd. <laughs> but I was that nerdy kid as a kid. You know, I, my sister was the big shiny shiny. Right? The cute one that everybody wanted to be around. I was weird. You know, I liked monsters and gross things and science, which a lot of people thought was a gross thing back then. You know, I liked dissections. That was weird. <laughs> uh, but then I come out of adult and you realize, you, you get into adulthood and, and you realize how much you shed your skin from when you're a kid and, and how much your environment sort of defines you comparatively. And I went from being this nerdy, ugly person to this <laughs> perceived idiot bimbo that had no brain. <laughs> and at first it really hurt. But now it's kind of hilarious because it's like it's totally subjective. You know, it's, it's completely subjective. And I realize it's pretty much meaningless. I mean, I mean, it has meaning, don't get me wrong. It, it limits what people are willing to accept from you. But what, when you realize what people are expecting, you can defy those expectations. You can craft your brand to give people what you, they expect from you and then give them more. But you can't cross the streams, right? You can't run up the down escalator constantly, you know? 
You can't have anal sex and take a shit at the same time. Oh wait, no, I've seen videos. That's not true. I stand corrected. But you can't lecture people and make people feel bad and then reserve the right to make jokes, Anita, because then you're not laughing with them, you're laughing at them. And so if you want to be able to be funny, Anita, if that is important to you, and I think it should be important to you, I think it should, that's a good goal. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear she's at, at least got some criticism. It's strange, the criticism that she responds to. But, whoops. But, you know, if, if you want the license to make jokes, then you have to, you know, what do you do when you go to a comedy club? You sit down, you get some watery beer, you get some, like, usually nachos. I get nachos at a comedy club, and I never know why. It's just my comedy club food. But you sit down, you have a few drinks, you're there to have a good time. You wouldn't walk into a comedy club that says you suck and I hate you, you know, unless you're going, because people, people who do that, people who have those sorts of insult comic things are usually sort of blue collar. It's that punching up phenomenon that people are talking about. But, you know, Anita punches down and people don't see that. Oh my God, it's men. It's men. Men are the top of the food chain. Men, you have to be punching up. No. Because it's that thing I was talking about before. There's a difference between patriarchs and the average dude. And, you know, the, the funny thing is, she's essentially dating a patriarch. I mean, Macintosh, I understand, is pretty well off. Could be wrong. But dude's got a mouth on him. You know, he has the ability to affect his world. He has the ability to make videos with mediocre production values. You know, he has the ability to call up Tim Schafer and a whole bunch of other people and go, can you help me out on this video? Most dudes can't do that. That is the difference between a patriarch and a regular dude. And when she's punching, when she's going after all men, well, she's at the side of a patriarch People get mad. People get mad. And they have a right to be mad. Because guess what? She's punching down. And most people don't realize. Did you like that? Wait, wait. She's punching down. Actually, it should be like this. She's punching down. Yeah. See, that was cool. But that's the thing. Like, people, and I think a lot of people can't even verbalize why they're freaking out at crap like that. So that's one thing I happen to be good at. I go all Tasmanian devil. And I'm like, why the hell did I just spin like a top? And I go, okay, let's, let's you know, figure out why I just freaked the hell out. And I, I'm pretty good at sort of settling down and going, okay, that's why I freaked the fuck out. Cause I had a right to freak the fuck out. And since I do that, you know, next time, I won't freak out so much. And that's way better than packing it down, like packing it down and just trying not to feel. No, you, not, you never, not feeling never works. Mastery of your emotions is not the suppression of emotions. No, then they all just bottle up and they, they spew out like vomit. Like that speech, Anita Sarkeesian made. That was a vomit speech. That was a massive vomit speech. None of the things she thinks she's hiding, she's actually hiding effectively. She's completely lacking in self-awareness, and it's sad. I'm not saying this to, you know, make fun of her. Ah, no. You know, I'm not saying this to beat up on her. I'm saying this to sort of go, reality check. Reality check, Anita, you're miserable. All you do is focus on the negative. All you do is focus on the bad elements of your experience and none of the amazing experiences that, that a combination of right place, right time, right person, and a whole lot of luck, you are completely unaware of the opportunities you have in front of you every single day. And in order to be really good 
at being funny. You have to be secure enough in what you do have to sit back and kind of go, you know, yeah, that was crap, but I can laugh at it. And that's why people who have struggle are better at being funny. But you can't be complaining and then be funny at the same time. You have to go, yeah, this sucks, but you know what? We're awesome and we'll get through it. And so that's my little deconstruction of the whole things I couldn't say. No, let's be real, right? She could say every single one of those things. She's up on the stage saying it. Whoops, Reddit mod beat me up. If you can't say something, then you can't say something. Somebody couldn't get up in Nazi Germany and say, I'm a Jew. That you can't say. You know, you couldn't be in the South during the antebellum and say I'm one quarter black. That you can't say. Those are things you objectively cannot say. Well, you could say them, but you know, it's not wise. And so for her to get up there, things I couldn't say, and she's saying all the things she couldn't say. Well, you're saying them. You can say them. If you're standing up on a stage with tons of people in the audience and it's gonna be on the internet, you are completely empowered to say the things you claim you can't say. You didn't say them. You wouldn't say them. Perhaps you were even told you shouldn't. And yeah, I, I, I frequently don't tell people fuck you when, you know, when they're intentionally trying to provoke me. Unless, you know, I'm making a point, I'm having a really bad day, or I'm really not taking it that seriously, and I just kind of want to troll back. But I'm well aware I can say it. But it, it's very different language. Saying, I, I shouldn't have said that. There are consequences to saying that. And saying I couldn't say it. And the thing that drives me, drives people so crazy that I've talked to is stuff like that, you know? Stuff like that, oh my Xbox is freaking out because I'm talking. What did I say that sounded like Xbox? Let's see what happens. Xbox, Anita Sarkeesian. Nothing. Xbox, feminist frequency. Xbox, things I couldn't say. Xbox, I'm awesome. Xbox, are you listening to me? Xbox, snap. Hey, it was listening to me, Xbox, unsnap. <laughs> double tap, okay, whoops. There we go. What, double tap or switch to unsnap? Xbox, stop listening. Stop listening, Xbox. Xbox, you're a very good listener. Xbox. Double tap. I'm supposed to be in the shower, Xbox. Unsnap, Xbox. There we go. See, it's all about knowing how to talk to your audience. And it takes a few tries. And you get better. And then shit finally works. You see the zen that gaming brings into our lives? Wasn't that awesome? Don't you feel complete? Okay, I'm just screwing around right now. Thanks for listening, guys.